Hey guys, Fushup here with another game commentary. This game I'm playing as Twitch Jungle. This was a game that I played on stream a little while back, and uh, this is a replay commentary, so I'm looking at it from uh, a spectator standpoint. Now, before we get into the game, I'd like to take a small moment to thank the guys over at lolskinshot.com for partnering up with me and helping me to enabling me to continue giving you guys the best content possible. So huge appreciation to those guys, and if you are interested in getting some Rare League skins for yourself, some cool looking skins, then that's definitely the place to go. The link to that will be in the description, including a discount code that you can use. Now getting into the actual uh, gameplay for the for Twitch Jungle, my runes and masteries, I like to run a AD Reds, Army Yellows, Magic Users, Blues, and Attack Speed Quints. And I like to go 2190 masteries. Pretty much the standard masteries that you would want if you were an AD carry, because that's at the end of the day. Twitch is basically an AD carry, but he also has very assassin like aspects to him. For my runes as well, like I was saying, uh, I take the attack speed quince as opposed to AD quince. You can go AD quince if you want, but I like to go attack speed so that I can apply my poison more uh, quickly and also just to help me clear a little bit as well. So I'm starting at my blue buff here which is actually quite strange for Twitch jungle. Twitch is a fairly cheesy jungler. He's not really standard and uh, consistent and that kind of stuff. And I, probably the best strategy you can have with him is to start at red buff, like start at red buff here, kill red and then go do a level 2 gank mid. That is a very standard Twitch jungle start. And it's very effective as well because you have your stealth so you, they don't see you coming and with that red buff it's quite frequently just a free kill. It used to be more popular back in like season 2 and uh, season even in maybe not so much in season 3 but basically you would start with a Doran's Blade and you'd do that you'd have immense damage and you'd just destroy everyone. Now I actually smited a bit late here as well if I remember correctly uh, you saw I DC'd at the beginning here that was um, I was checking to see whether my stream had dropped and stuff like that, so uh, I was a bit I was a bit preoccupied here with the start, and that's also why I didn't start red buff either. That's why I started that blue. And uh, the reason the uh, skill that I started with as well is I start with my Q when I'm playing Twitch because your Q when you come out of stealth, you may think that's not too useful when you're jungling. You know why why do you want to go in stealth? But actually, it is quite useful because when you come out, you get an attack speed steroid, and so that's actually quite nice for you to to clear a bit faster with that attack speed steroid. So you want to be quite aggressive when you're playing as Twitch in the jungle. People compare him a bit to Shaco, and to be honest, that's semi-true, but I would also disagree to an extent. I think Shaco and Twitch are quite similar because they're very aggressive junglers, but whereas Shaco is constantly in your face, like counter-jungling, invading, ganking, Twitch is more ganking and then farming. Ganking and then farming. So here I have seen a pretty good opportunity to do a... I gank, I did my level 3 clear, I got my double buffs, and then I looked for a place to go. I did look to, to go mid there, but as you saw, I, I ran into Nocturne, and Nocturne would beat the crap out of me if we wanted a 1v1 fight, so I'm not going anywhere near him. And so instead I just went top lane to see whether I could get a nice kill there. Now I can, because I can bypass wards with my stealth, it's pretty easy to get a kill actually in, in these lanes. And you'll also see as well, once I hit level 4, I like to get a second point in my Q before I max my E. That's the skill order that I like to go. Two points in Q, then max my E, then go Q, and then finally with my with my W. Well, I actually think maybe in this game, I think I might forget to do that and instantly put another point in my E. But that that's a mistake. But uh, in theory, you want to have two points in your in your stealth. Um, this game as well actually is a pretty good display of how uh, Twitch Jungle works. And also how you can have quite a lot of impact if you're playing these kind of assassin junglers. How you can really dictate the flow of the game and how it works out. Because this game, as you'll see, doesn't go too well from my team's point of view. I do quite well. Um, but I managed to, to do quite well in order to, to win this game. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty nice one to show. But anyway, you, you'll, you'll see that as the game unfolds, no doubt. So this, what I'm doing right now isn't really anything special, I'm just clearing the jungle. And now I see a really good time to go into mid lane. I want to rewind this ever so slightly so before this goes in. Now the reason why I instantly went in is because Fizz here, like right here, he's, he just used his trickster onto, onto Kale. Now if, ignore these uh, cooldowns, these, these are always wrong in lower quarter, but 
He's already used his E, which is pretty much for his primary escape. So I know this is a perfect time to go in, to go in for the gank. So I get my staff onto him, I beat the crap out of him, I expunge him, and he's on really, really low health now. So if, I, if he hadn't used his E, if he hadn't used his trickster, I may have thought, I may have waited around for a little while to see whether he would use it. See, whenever you're ganking places, you want to make sure that their escapes are... If, if their escapes are on cooldown, then they're not going to be able to use them to escape, obviously. And if that is the case, then the gank is a lot easier. So if you can bait it out, or do something like that, or make sure that it... Or try and, uh, try and get those escapes down, then you're going to have a much easier gank. So what happened here as well was basically Nocturne stayed to hold the lane. The reason I didn't talk about it at the time was because there was nothing special. Nocturne, Nocturne tried to hold the lane. Camera, please, stop moving. Nocturne tried to hold the lane, and uh, he they went a bit aggressive onto me, but because Kale was level 6, she can nullify all of the damage, so I didn't have anything to be afraid of, and uh, I had nothing to be afraid of, and so we managed to pick up two free kills. I tower died for the second kill, but which means that I end up dying, but it's kind of worth it because... I find that people like Twitch, these kind of assassins, it's, I like trading kill for kill, as long as it's not screwing over my lane, so I wouldn't want to like, trade one for one with this Fizz for example, because then that means that Kale's going to be in a lot of trouble, but if I can trade kills, then I can, I can do a lot with these kills, because assassins, people, people like Twitch tend to snowball quite hard in the jungle if they get a decent amount of gold and stuff. And uh, this game as well, I'm going with a Madreds, going into a Feral Flare. Whenever Feral Flare, uh, basically the strength of Twitch Jungle is going to be influenced by the strength of Feral Flare. So Feral Flare is um, over nerfed, which in my opinion, upon making this video, uh, Feral Flare is a bit too weak at the moment. Then Twitch isn't as strong. But if I had made, if I played this game and made this video a few, like a, a month ago or so, whenever Feral Flare was on, on its release, basically, then Twitch Jungle is a lot stronger. So you'll find that the the strength of Twitch Jungle fluctuates with the strength of Feral Flare. And I think Feral Flare is a very nice item on him. It helps him with his clears, because he's mostly uh, mostly basic attack clearing. He, he does have his W and his E, but it's not really a huge deal compared to his basic attacks. And also the attacks we started on his, on his Q, on his stealth, means that he's going to get a lot of those on-hit on -hit effects off from the Wriggles. So I'm just farming quite a lot here. Like, there's no point me trying to force a gank because there's nothing. There's nothing going. I may as well just try and may as well just clear out this jungle and not waste my time. Because you see, if I if I had gone to the lane here and waited for Pantheon, then you know I, it's a quite an inefficient use of my uh, inefficient use of my time. But here's a good time to go in for a gank now instead. I use my stealth before I go to Tribush so that he can't see. If it's warded, he won't see me. And then I tell Pantheon to engage a little early before I get there. And he's pretty slow. Like, if you've got red buff on Twitch and you manage to appear on your on an enemy who's kind of overextended, then there's very little they can do to stop you, to be honest. Like it's really quite threatening if you're if you are that Twitch. However, a, a weakness to Twitch jungle, a, a pretty big weakness to Twitch jungle, in fact, is counter ganks. And uh, if if and the, and you falling behind as well. That, that's two. That's his two biggest weaknesses: getting counter ganked and falling behind. If you fall behind and you don't have a lot of damage, then you're pretty useless. Because without damage and you're playing Twitch, then you know, what else do you have? Not really that much. So you don't want to fall behind. And uh, if you get counter ganked, then in like two v two skirmishes, Twitch just blows up. So you, if that happens, then you're in a lot of trouble, to be honest. So you want to be careful of that as well. But anyway, I go in for a, for a little move onto this bot lane here. Again, I use myself before I get into the wave, into the lane, so they can't see me coming. The whole idea around Twitch jungle with your ganks is that you don't want the enemies to be able to react to you. You want to be able to get, like, the, the, basically, the ideal time for the enemies to see you is when you are on their face. That's the first time that your enemies want to be aware of you. Right, you don't want them being aware of your presence any time before, whether you've mucked up your your engage or something like that. That you only want them to know about you when you're on their face, because then then they can't do anything to stop you, and that's that's the perfect situation. Now, because we got two kills in that bot lane as well, this is the perfect time to do drag. Because if they're too dead, then they can't they can't contest, 
so we get drag for free. And if, and if they try to defend dragon, then they're going to die, which is exactly what happens. Although we do trade one for one because threshold's quite low. But uh, Fizz escapes using his flash, and I use my flash to try and chase him, but unfortunately, I can't catch him. It was quite a, a silly move by me trying to chase a Fizz, because Fizz is... Unless I get some points in my stealth, so that I am pretty fast uh, with a move speed boost, then I'm not going to get anything done. But I see another good time to go in here. Again, the first time the enemy team is aware that I'm, that I'm in here is when I'm on their face. And also, I want to point out a small mechanical thing which I'm doing here. Um, this isn't like, you know, this isn't like double lift or, or anything like that, you know, but it's it's something you need to be doing. If you look here, I'm not, I don't come out of stealth here, like, this actually is well in my attack range. I could easily be attacking her here, but I don't want to do that because I know that Ash's escape is towards the tower. So I want to make sure, like, I know that's where she's going to be heading, and so in order to maximize the damage I can do to her, I want to be in her, her like, escape route because then she has to run through me. And, you know, that, that means that I'm going to have a more successful gank. So when I come out of stealth, I'm actually on her face. And watch, I auto-attack, and then move. Auto-attack, and then move. Auto-attack, and then move. I'm always getting closer to her. If I, basically, any time your, your auto-attacks with your attack speed have like a... It's kind of like a cooldown, right? If you think about your, your auto-attacks having cooldown based off of your attack speed because obviously you attack once and then it recharges you attack again it recharges that kind of thing and during that time when you're not attacking when your when your auto attack is on cooldown so to speak then you should be moving in between each of your attacks you should be moving so that you're closing the distance between you and your enemy if i just stood still if i just right clicked an ash and just stood still and been like chasing uh chasing that ash then She's probably going to get away from me because I'm just going to I'm I'm not going to be able to keep up with her, and also it leaves me quite vulnerable to the owner see seeing me. But because uh, because I stealth on her face and then I auto attack did my attack move, then we managed to secure the kill. So I'm going to look to get a blade of the Rune king after uh, well now basically I'm going to be rushing blade of the Rune king. Blade of the Rune king is a very good synergy with your Wiggles lantern and especially. On Twitch, it's very, very good because this Blade Rune King is a very good item for 1v1ing people. And Twitch is an assassin, as the type of jungler he is. 1v1ing people is really quite good for him. And also, it means it just gives him a lot of a lot more kill potential with the uh, the chase chase potential as well. It's just it's just very, very good item overall for Twitch. So that's what I'm going to be getting next. Now, I actually left my blue buff here. I didn't do that early. It's been up for a while. And uh, to be honest with you, the, the, there isn't really an, a massive reason for this. I just wanted to go, I wanted to go top lane, and because uh, I thought Pantheon might get ganked, or I wanted to go gank this Nasus, and so I left the blue because I didn't think that that would invade it. But maybe I should have taken blue. I don't know. Maybe it was a bit risky. So I put my stealth here, and again I go in on this on this Fizz. Fizz uses his E on Kale, and Kale dies, but there's no getting away from me, and I get a 500 gold shutdown. The reason why I went mid lane, just to re gonna rewind this ever so slightly. Oops, that's not the rewind button, that's the pause button. I thought that I thought the replay had crashed and I was about to cry. But the reason why I went in mid here is because I knew that Fizz was gonna be aggressive onto this Kale. Like if I hadn't gone mid here, Kale would have just died on her own. Like that's pretty much guaranteed. Whenever you're against an assassin like Fizz is and a very aggressive player, then and 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 your laner is low on health. You can pretty much guarantee that your lane's gonna be gonna be dying soon, or that that fizz is gonna is gonna overextend to try and get that kill. So uh, I knew that was gonna happen. So I ended up going for going in for fizz, and I, I get the kill on him. We trade one for one, but we get a huge shutdown on fizz, so that's all good. And it, and then I get to siege this tower too. And this nocturne is kind of low. Like I just use my feral flare ward here on the. Uh, on this in this uh, little bush here so i know if bot lane try to rotate and they come for me i know i know that i'm going to be safe although we can see them so maybe um you know basically they're not going to come for me and this guy is really low and i've got red buff and you know he he's in a lot of trouble if he stays around it's quite hard to harass someone under towers twitch because with your poison you end up keep like attracting tower aggro like for a very long time because you're you you can't just poke them come out poke them come out poke them come out because your poison will stick on them and then every time your poison ticks you'll draw a tower aggro so it's kind of difficult but he's like as soon as I got a few hits on him and he still didn't back off I just popped my ulti which gives me increased attack range because he he thinks he's safe he's like yeah 
whatever, I'll just run away. I may be on low health, but I'll run away. But he's not safe because he's... I just put my ult and suddenly my attack range is, is really huge and he, he just dies. He does die to, to my red buff and poison tick, but... You know, that does a lot of damage. Poison and red buff does a huge amount of damage if they're both ticking at the same time. So we managed to take Nocturne down as well, so that's another kill under my belt. And now I managed to finish my Blade Ruin King as well. And I'm probably going to go for a Last Whisper next. I think, excuse me, Last Whisper is going to be a nice item. Because if you look at the enemy team, Nasus has rushed a Frozen Heart. He's going to be getting a lot of armor. Nocturne has a Chain Vest in his inventory. Leona typically gets a lot of armor as a character as well. And Fizz is pretty much 100% guaranteed to be getting a Zonyas after that Lich Bane. That's pretty much a core item build on Fizz. Lich Bane, Zonyas. So getting this last whisper is important, and also I like to such important that I like to say as well that this item build isn't necessarily a reaction, or it, it's as much as of a proactive buy as it is a reactive buy. Yes, Nasus has a frozen heart. Yes, Nocturne has a chain vest, but I'm not buying Last Whisper. It's not like I'm looking at their items and thinking, oh, they've got a lot of armor, I'm going to buy Last Whisper next. I'm also thinking, what are they going to have in the future? What, are the what, what item build are they going to have? We also have Graves and Pantheon, which means that that's a lot of AD on our team like to begin with. So the chance of them buying armor is quite high, so I'm preemptively buying this Last Whisper. Now I'm just pushing this bot here, not really getting too much done, but I wanted to put a little bit of pressure on because I know that Dragon is going to be spawning soon. We see Dragon spawning, and so I'm going to take it away really quick. Now, before this goes down, I want to mention a few a mistake that, that is made here, mistakes were made. First mistake made is that I ping this to go and do it, and Graves and Thresh aren't on it. Now, whether this is a mistake by them or me, it is... 50-50, right? Graze and Thresh shouldn't be whatever they're doing over here, because I don't really think they're achieving much. They should be on Dragon. However, me knowing that they're not on Dragon, why am I starting it? There's, there's no point me starting this Dragon here, because my team aren't here. Now, like I say, I can blame my team as much as I want. It doesn't change the fact they're not here, which makes this, starting this Dragon, a bad decision. In addition to that, Kale roamed up top lane. If I had timed Dragon and known when it was going to respawn, because I know this happened, uh, at, I know it when I played the game live, I didn't actually have this Dragon timed. I had a feeling for when it was up, but I didn't have the direct timer, which is sloppy and a mistake by me. Because it wasn't timed, Kale roamed top lane, which means, and that's not her fault, you know, if I had timed it and said, Kale, don't go top, Dragon's going to come up soon, then we'd have, we'd have Kale. But we don't have Kale for this fight either, which means that we are very vulnerable. Bot lane can come and get this, mid lane can collapse, jungle can collapse. We're going to get in a lot of trouble, basically. Now, I do manage to take drag, and then I get blown the crap out of with a Leon roll and Nocturne ult and huge focus. And that's a 500 gold bounty. So we go 3 for O, but we do at least get Dragon. But still, considering how far ahead of how far ahead we are in this game, and also how fed I am personally, the fact that I can pretty much mop up our entire fight if I play it correctly, and I don't really even need to rely on my team in order to mop up a fight. It's all on me. It's all on my shoulders. Considering those 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 things considered, this was really bad for us. Really bad. And like I say. The reason why it went so poorly was not, you know, I can't just blame my team. I mean, it's quite easy in that situation, you, you would think, to just say, oh my goodness, what are you doing? Why, why didn't you come, why didn't you come drag? You know, something like that. But, you know, it, it's as much my fault as, as it is, as it is uh, anyone else's. And that, that's the kind of mentality you really need to have when you're playing this game. And that, it's a healthy mentality. You don't want to just be blaming yourself all the time and be like beating yourself up, obviously. But you've got to have a balance as with everything. There's always, always, uh, it's healthy to maintain a balance. But you want to get out of the mindset of looking for something to blame everything every time something goes wrong and instead trying to flip it and just think, well, you know what? You know what could I have done differently? Sometimes there's not ever, not anything you could you could do, and you just have to accept that, that that's gonna that's gonna happen. That's the case. Sometimes you couldn't have done more, but nine times out of ten, there's always something different that you could have done. 
And uh, getting frustrated and blaming your team is always de is is the best way to go on tilt. And when you're going on tilt, you're going to lose games. So I just did a little bit of uh, nice uh, gank onto NASA's top lane, pushed down the wave a little bit. I wanted to try and get a push onto the tower, but NASA's TP'd. So I take take red buff, buy my last whisper, and uh, just keep clearing a little bit now for the buffs. As you notice, whenever I engage. Um, Especially the buffs. Whenever I engage the buffs, I use my stealth. That's because, again, I want the attack speed steroid. Now, I see Ash. This is how you play Twitch. This is how you play any kind of assassin in general, but also assassin junglers right now. I'm not grouping to team fight because my team is not very strong. Pantheon is not stronger than Nasus, even though Nasus is 0 3. Nasus is, in my opinion, a lot stronger than Pantheon because he's got more CS and because he's Nasus, which means he's going to have stacks. Fizz is arguably a lot stronger than, than Kale. The ADs are quite equal. In fact, well, our graves is stronger, but still, we're not going to win fights flat out. So I know that I am so fed, I am so strong here, that I can probably 2v1 in this situation, especially if I can get a jump on Ash. So that's actually what I'm going to do here. I pop everything and just try and kill, try and kill Ash here. Now, this is, what, this is something which is quite unfortunate, is that Ash doesn't die instantly. Which means that I don't. I have to waste a few extra basic attacks on her to to finish her off. And this is the second mistake I make: is I don't flash the Leona roll. I don't flash the ult. Instead, I flash afterwards to try and chase her. Now Leona is one basic attack off from dying, which is quite unfortunate because, like I say, if Ash had just instantly died, then I wouldn't have had to. Uh, I would have killed her. So that's slightly unlucky, but at the same time, you want to, like, the difference between proactive and reactive play is quite big, actually, in this game. Like, there's all, if you can, if you can try and predict things and make a play in hindsight, not in hindsight, that's, that's the wrong phrase, but if you can do something before, basically, I'm chatting a lot of crap right now, but what I mean is, if I had flashed the Leona ulti instead of getting stunned and then flashing after Leona, if I had done that, I would have killed Leona. I probably wouldn't have overextended for Nocturne and I would have got out safely. Or I could have just backed off. Like, it, it, it was greedy to begin with. But, but yeah, you know, you, if you always want to try and flash the CC as opposed to getting CC'd and then flashing afterwards. That's always going to work better, uh, work out a lot better for you. But still, that kind of play where I'm just manhunting people like that Ash there, that's the kind of stuff you want to be doing when you're playing Twitch jungle outside of the lane phase now, or any kind of assassins in general, not just not just a jungler and not just Twitch. But at the same time, if they're grouping up and they're taking objectives, then we need to respond as well. Now I'm holding, hanging around right here because my stealth's on cooldown and because my team isn't quite around. We have lost Kale as well, which means that this would be a 4v5 fight, and I'm just looking to see if anyone gets caught or out of position. If they get caught out of position, then we can maybe go on them, but we don't want to get too close, especially with an Ash arrow, although Ash probably used, I am assuming Ash used her arrow on, on Kale here. But here someone's caught out of position, and so I can kill them. Unfortunately, I probably could have maybe survived if I managed to grab the Thrash Lantern, but Nasus has a huge Q farm, which means that he's got 312. 23 minutes in. Actually, that's that's not that's not actually massive to be fair, but it's it's enough to really hurt me. <laughs> like when you're playing Twitch, you're not tanky. You're very squishy. So you we want to be picking people off, like I did there with Fizz, and it's quite easy to do that because you've got your stealth. You always want to be looking for those opportunities. However, you do have to be careful. If you get caught out of position, if you you know if the enemy team can wail on you, then you're not going to last very long, especially if your stealth is on cooldown. Right now I've respawned and I wanted to try and take I'll the dragon right away. But dragon, the enemy team took dragon, so there's no dice there. And now my team is getting caught and uh, they're dying as well. And this is actually also, I kind of baited them ever so slightly. I mean I managed to steal the, the red buff here, but this isn't worth it because I'm just going to get sharked and jumped on and die, which is exactly what happens. I try and... I don't know what I'm doing basically, like this right here it, it, is just really dumb. We, we get 5 for 1 here, I mean it's... We shouldn't be invading in there, like we're just going to get caught, we're going to get collapsed on, which is exactly what happens. And I get greedy saying, I don't even know, like I didn't even get a kill, I just went for a red buff. It, it was it was awful play by me. Uh, but at least I got the red, so I guess you could say it was worth it. 5 for 1, got red buff, worth, as long as I said so in all chat, it was worth, right? 
So um, that's really not good for us. And if you look at my team now as well, I have 10 kills and 13 kill participation. And my team has 16 kills overall. I'm part of 13 of those. And I have 10 of the kills. So I almost have 60, 66.66, 66, whatever. I almost have two thirds of the team's kills, which is not really a very good goal distribution. And basically it means that my team is quite weak and I'm uh, the strong one, which means that whenever this happens, you know, this isn't me blaming my team and saying, oh my god, my team sucks. This is me saying, there's, there's always two ways to look at things. You can look at things as, um, you know, I want to pause this actually because I want to mention something uh, in a sec as well. You can look at it as, oh my god, my team sucks. Or you can look at it as, great, I've been given, like, I have a lot of, I'm going to have a lot of personal impact this game. And that's the way you should be looking at it. You shouldn't be looking and saying, my team is weak. You should be saying, I am strong. So, so basically, if I make good plays, we have a higher chance of winning. If I make dumb plays, we're going to lose. Basically, if I play like crap from here on out, this game is lost. 100% lost because I'm the one who's fed. Now, the reason why I pause this is because I want to talk about this here. These kind of plays, these kind of aggressive plays, when you're playing as Twitch or someone who is very slippery, who has good escape, like Lee Sin is another one, even though he doesn't have stealth or Shaco, then these kind of plays are fine for me. But if you are a teammate, do not follow these kind of plays. And if you are, in addition, if you are like, if you are the Twitch, be aware that your team, your team might follow you, and you don't want them to follow you because your team might not have as good a skip. Well, they're pretty much guaranteed to not have as good an escape as you. So if they follow you, thinking they're say, I'm thinking, yeah, let's go make the plays, let's go do stuff, and then you know you're just like. Well, I didn't really want to do anything, I was just poking my head around because I, I know I've got a good escape, I'm not going to get caught. And then they get caught, it's really ugly. And that actually starts a lot of arguments in Sonic Cube because they think, you know, you're, you're, they think you're baiting them and, and they start blaming you and it's it's really bad. But here's, I see another good opportunity to go in onto, onto this anus here. Unfortunately, <laughs> my I wasn't, I didn't trust my poison so I flashed in for the last basic attack but... It was unnecessarily unnecessary, so I wasted my flash. But again, I'm just uh, I was kind of I was kind of poaching around there looking for a play, and that, because I know I've got a lot of damage still, especially considering this Nasus when he rushed a tank item and then built a triforce, so he's not actually any tankier really. Um, I know that I'm I still have good kill potential on him, so uh, we can manage to get that kill onto Nasus there, and that's that's all good. Now, there's not really too much to do. Like we, It's really hard for us to siege as a team. We don't have a very good siege team at all. Usually, if you're sieging, you want to have either good poke, so like long-range stuff like Nidalee or Caitlyn, or you want to have a good poke on a tower, which is usually someone like... I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, but, you know, someone like uh, Lucian or uh, Caitlyn, or not necessarily long-range on the tower, but just people who take down towers very quickly, so someone like Rengar or Nasus. When they have a, uh, they can, well actually Rengar, no not Rengar anymore, he got changed and he can't do it anymore. But basically someone like Nasus who can use his Q. Um, we don't have anything that's good for sieging. And in addition to having poke, if you, if a part of sieging is uh, tower diving. So you want someone tanky in order to be able to tower dive. And uh, we don't have anyone tanky to tower dive, so we can't do that either. Now this is a bit of an unfortunate play here. We try to catch people off. And uh, in the end, we can't. Now, I don't want to face check and rush into into the enemy team. So I'm going to play this very slowly and just say how this fight goes. I'm not jumping. Notice how I'm not jumping into the back line here. Because I need to be very careful. I need to stay at the back. I pop my ulti and just start blasting away at Leona. Because I know it's going to hit the people in the background. When Nocturne jumps in my face, I change my focus onto him. And then I change my focus onto the people who are chasing me down now. Which is... Fizz and Leona. Now we still have very good priority targets alive, but we need to be careful because if this Nasus focuses me, look, look what's going to happen to me if Nasus. Boom! That's a huge chunk of my health considering we, he's got massive cooldown reduction. Another boom and I'm gone. Boom, I'm gone. So there's not really much I can do to get away from Nasus. However, if he decides, holy sh! Bloody hell, this guy. This guy it hurts. If if there's nothing I can do to escape this uh, this Nasus then I'm going to die, but at least my team uh, should be able to get him down. So that was a pretty perfectly played team fight as far as it goes from my point of view. 
even though I died, it's fine if you die as long as you've achieved something. You know, you, you can't... It's impossible to have zero deaths. Like, you, you can die in a fight, which like I did there, and, it's still, and you still have played well, which is, in my opinion, the way that fight went down. I popped my ulti and blasted away through them. I attacked people who were in my face. I didn't jump into their backline trying to get their carries because if I did that, then I would just instantly die by getting focused. So I just played it patiently. I, I dealt with the threats as they were coming into me and uh, I kept good positioning. And so that was a good team fight, which is really gonna help us turn this game around considering we pretty much thrown this game before. Even though, even though we are actually ahead in gold, a lot of that is basically with me. My team, compared to their counterparts, my Pantheon is a thousand gold behind their top lane. I'm gonna pause here because I want to rewind this team fight in a sec. Our jungler, it well obviously I'm like really far ahead of their jungler, but our mid is behind, our AD is behind, our support isn't behind. So good jobs, good job Thresh. But basically, we're all far behind apart from me. So that that gold income isn't very indicative of how the game is going. So this fight has happened. I didn't actually manage to do too much in this fight. I didn't have to do too much. I kind of just mopped up. And, uh, yeah, that, that was basically just a mop-up fight for me. I didn't really do too much. I, I was going to rewind it, but in, as it turns out, I didn't really do anything. So there's nothing really too much to analyze there. Um, but it was a good fight for us, obviously, again. And now we get to push this down. Ho getting the push down onto the tower and then running away. Now, we have to be quite careful of a Baron play happening again now. If you remember, they took Baron a little while ago, uh, earlier, when we did that awful play. Uh, they managed to get Baron. Graves tried to steal it, but he couldn't. Uh, but now Baron's going to be respawning soon. So if that, if when Baron respawns, basically they have a timer and we don't. So we don't know when it is going to respawn exactly, but we need to be around to contest it because we can contest it. We don't want to give it away for free because there's just no need. And now right here, I'm just looking to be very aggressive. I'm looking to invade their jungle and try to catch someone out of position and kill them, which is exactly what I do here to this Ash. Ash almost killed me, but that's because she uh, she stunned me and she wasn't going to kill me if she didn't do that, but you know, I'm just again, this is kind of how you play these assassin junglers, you uh, or assassins in general, you look for people caught out of position and you try to get them down. Now I really shouldn't be doing this, this is a really bad idea, if I go for this, this is going to end horribly so thankfully I don't go for it but I'm going to be in a lot of trouble if it, yeah, I, I instantly flash, kind of preemptively again, just in case Fizz goes for me, like if he, if he sharks me, and, uh, so I just, I just flash instantly, like, like, this, that was a, um, that was, I'm going to rewind and just play that out again, because this is, this is the, I made this mistake before, like I was saying with Leona. I made this mistake where I waited till I was hit by the CC and then I flashed. Here, I flashed to preemptively dodge it. I chase after Nocturne, with, I pop my ulti to chase after him, and then go, go on to Fizz. I position myself very far away as long as my ulti is up, so that I can get a lot of poke off onto this Fizz, and that he can't hit me while I'm, uh, you know, while I've got my ulti on, making, making the most of the range, and then I finish him off as he's jumping into me to finish me off. So that was a pretty good more kills for me. And look look at the scores of my team. Like, I know sc scores aren't always indicative of how the game is going. And you should never base a game by or how yeah, ne never base a game by what the scores are. But at the same time there's always a bit of there's always truth behind these things. And uh, basically long story short is that again, I am the one who's gonna have a lot of impact in this game. Now I've said this a few times, and I don't want you guys thinking I'm just bragging or being cocky. This is just the mentality which I need to have. I need to be aware that if the game is on my shoulders. That if we lose this game, it's because I lost the game. Not because my team were weak, not because my team played bad, but because I didn't play good enough. And that's the, that's that's the mentality. Now right here, we Baron has spawned and my team actually tried to start it. But starting it is a bad idea because we get collapsed on and we die. I put myself trying to see whether I can get a playoff here. And uh, it, it's looking a bit too difficult, so I end up waiting for, for them to engage onto us. So I'm just popping my ult and attacking from max range. This is kind of what you do when you play Twitch. So very similar to what I did in this te team fight before. And now I'm just kind of running away. Like, it's, it's me and Thresh versus the world here. And if I go in, I'm going to get wrecked. I'm going to die. So I don't want to do that. I throw my cast down to try and slow people, but they actually dodge it, so that doesn't work. 
and then I managed to <laughs> loop around and actually get a cheeky kill onto the Leona. But, uh, so we have to be, you know, I couldn't fight that. There's no point in me trying to fight. No point in trying to get something done, because I can't. Now, instead, I'm, I'm instead right now, I'm not even recalling. I'm staying, I'm, I'm staying around to try and get, to try and get a kill. Now, this is actually a, a questionable decision by me. I'm chasing this Nocturne down, because I know I, I can, I know I can kill him, like, he's dead. But, should I be defending here? This is the decision I've made. Do I go for this kill? By killing this guy, it kind of stops the Baron play, which could happen later, and also enables the Baron play for us. But it does mean that we lose this tower. And actually, because it's quite late on, quite late on into the game, and because it's Nasus, it also means we lose the Inhib tower as well, which is really bad. But we don't lose the Inhib, which is good. And now, because we've killed, because we killed Nocturne, and also because we just killed Nasus. We can now make this Baron play, and this is a this is a free. If ever there was a free Baron, this is it right here. So we can take this down, and then we can go make a push onto somewhere and try and end the game. Basically, like right now, the, the death times are so long that we can pretty much, uh, if if we play it smart, if we play it well, we can end the game. We get the dragon as well, and now I'm just uh, pushing a wave down. We should we should ideally be grouping here, but um, some people are recalling, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna push this wave down, but I'm not gonna overextend. If I overextend here and I get caught and die, that wouldn't necessarily be a... Well, it, it wouldn't be a good thing in any situation, I don't think, but it wouldn't necessarily be bad if my team were, were on the map. If, if they sent, like, two... They're going to have to send more than one person to stop me because no one on the enemy team can 1v1 me. So if they send more than one person to stop me, then that means that my team can probably go and take that inhib mid for free. So I'd be okay. with That's obviously an okay trade. That's fine. Now, as you see here as well, I've uh, I've sold my boots for Zephyr because this is my full six item build. Like once once you have way too much gold, you can sell your Berserker Greaves for Zephyr because that gives you move speed. That also gives me the tenacity to deal with Wither a bit easier as well. And I've also got a GA because they have a lot of uh, basically. If I get caught, Twitch doesn't have very good escapes, so it's hard for you to avoid getting in trouble. If Nasus withers me, if Fizz jumps onto my face, if if I get hit by a Leona roll, I'm I'm in a lot of trouble. So I may as well just have a GA, and I, I don't have the mobility to kind of avoid these things. So sometimes you just gotta take it to the face and and uh, get a GA basically. Now, and this is another reason why you want a GA because if you get Ash Arrow, you're in trouble. Thankfully, Kale ulted me, which is perfect, which is really good by Kale. Like that, that's the way you want to go when you're playing Kale. You want to be ulting your carries if they ever get caught out of position. Like, that was a mistake by me to be so pushed up versus an Ash. And thankfully my uh, team was there to bail me out. So I'm just gonna... This fight now is uh, chasing them down, trying to pick them off. Nothing special here. They, the, you know, the hard thing happened earlier when Cal ulted me. Once Cal ulted me and they overextended to try and kill me and didn't, didn't kill me, then that was it. That was the fight one for us and now because it's so late on into the game. That's also the game as well, and the victory. So I hope you enjoyed this commentary, guys. This uh, game is pretty much over. Um, if you enjoyed it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to me to see more educational league content with a bit of entertaining stuff on the side as well. You can find me on my Facebook and my Twitter. And you can catch me streaming on Twitch as well. This game was a, a uh, stream game after all. So uh, if you want to see that stuff, you can follow me there. All those links will be in the description, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you uh, learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you in my next video.